For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The main name of all names is the Lord Jesus Christ. I see a lot of names around me upon signs, but I don't see Jesus. And only Jesus saves. In the realm of politics, what you need, you need the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. None of these names can save you. None of these names will reach out to you after they get your vote. The only time they come out is to get your vote. Jesus Christ is available at all times, anytime, until the rapture of the church. Jesus will come to you and meet with you and meet your needs. If you come to Him as a sinner, the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. I don't care if you're offended at the name of Jesus. I'm offended at these names that Jesus is not glorified. Jesus is not raised. I'm offended at that. I'm offended at a country that will not allow Jesus into the White House. Look at your candidates. None of them are representatives of Christ in the church and the Bible. None of them. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given amongst men whereby ye must be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. The wages of sin is death. You may not even make it to election day. You may die beforehand with a ballot in your hand and without Jesus you'll wake up in hell with a ballot in your hand. For God so loved the world. A love that's sacrificial. A love that has a need for you. Because you have a need. You have a need of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ to cleanse you of your sins before you die. The wages of sin is death. That's the end of my political message and God approves of it. There's no other name that will get you to the Father. But that name of the Lord Jesus Christ which said, I am the way. The truth. Ha! The truth. Look at all these names. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. By the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, saved since 1987, I'm going somewhere further than the White House. I'm going to the throne of God. As a matter of fact, the Bible says I'm not going, I'm already there. I'm just waiting for this, for this body to be redeemed. I'm waiting for this body to get glorified. I'm waiting for this body to be before the Father. A new body. And that's all by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's all upon the gospel that Jesus died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. You want to talk about a massive health care program? I got God's health care program. A sinless body that will never suffer, never cry, never weep, and never have trouble for the rest of your life and no copay. And you can be forever with the one that will never and has can and never can lie to you. All by coming to Calvary's cross. A place where God went for you. God, His blood, Acts 20:28, 20, went to die for you because you're a sinner. If you think you're good... The Bible says there's none good. No, not one. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You're all sinners. Some are saved sinners. Some are lost sinners. We're all sinners. And except the blood of Jesus Christ will suffer the wrath of God. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Today may be your last day. You may die today. There are people that 
never woke up this morning had plans for today. The wages of sin is death. The very fact is that we will die shows that we are sinners. And the Bible says the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. There's a problem. We are sinners destined to die, but God has provided a lamb to remove that sin. Behold, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You have a sin condition. Don't you go near those Christians.
human being absent from this body and present with the Lord. You're the person that rejects God and Jesus Christ then die and be buried and wake up in a lake that burns forever called hell. The lake of fire. Being in torment. How many of you would I say, hey, come up here, free torture. I will torture you for free. Come on up. Sign up. And yet you reject God, and if you reject God, there is torture, the lake of fire that burns forever. Torture. Forever. Because you have not believed on the Son. You have any material? God is reaching out to you. He does not want to put you into hell. He is long-suffering. He is not willing that any should perish that He sent His Son. His love is that He has given you the Lord Jesus Christ. The love that reaches out to send a loud mouth for you to hear God's grace, God's gospel. Now I can use this mouth to proclaim a baseball game. I can use this mouth for a football game. I can use this mouth for a bunch of candidates, but I'm using it for Jesus Christ, for you to be saved. For you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. A mouth that's used for God, a feet that is pleasurable by God by preaching the gospel. There is none nothing that can save you but Jesus. Nothing. All these people you vote for, you will not enter to the White House. You will not enter, enter into the, ma the, the mayor's mansion. But believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will appear before God's throne for eternity. Access to God gets you to the God that created you. The God that created everything. Now that's access. And that's access by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ which cleanses us from all sin. The wages of sin is death. You're going to die because you are a sinner. At this moment, before you die, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Why do you come out every week? Why do you do this every week? To proclaim Jesus Christ that I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power of salvation to those that believe. This message of Jesus was good yesterday. This message of Jesus is good today. And the gospel is good. Lord willing, if there's a tomorrow for you, it's good for tomorrow. But don't wait. Don't turn away Jesus because he'll turn you away. They that deny him, he'll deny you in the presence of the angel. He'll deny you in the presence of the Father. You will not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Many shall cry, Lord, did I do this? Lord, did I do that? Lord, wasn't I this? Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. The only way to know the Father and know the Son is by Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. For God so loved the world. You're going to have more love. I got the love. I'm standing right here with love. Telling you the gospel. That Christ died for our sins. He was buried. And arose again victorious. According to the scriptures. The empty tomb makes Christianity 
true and alive. Christ Jesus is the only one that has risen from the grave and that is seated at the right hand of the Father. He is the only means to get to God by cleansing of your sins. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. God doesn't care what you think. God doesn't care what you believe. He's written it down in His Word what you, what He wants you to do. What He expects you to do for salvation. And that is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Right here, sir. You can come read it. Come on over here. I'll show you. Come on over here. I will show you where it says. Come on over. I will show you where it says. Come on. You want to speak? I'll show you where it says. To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. See, He won't come. I've got the offer. I've got the word. He won't come. A simpleton. A mocker of the word of God while I hold the word of God and tell you, ye must be born again. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Acts 16.31 God is reaching out to you in Isaiah 1. He says, come now, right now, come now. You may not have another moment. God says, now, come, let us. God is reaching out to you to come on. Let's you and I to get together and find out what you need to do. God is not willing that any should perish. God does not want to put people in hell. It is your choice. God has met everything that needs to be met for your salvation. It is for you the free will to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. If you die and go to hell, it's on your own merit. Because Christ has already made the penance, the, the payment. Christ has already done what needs to be done for you to be saved. He has died upon that cross. He has been buried. And He arose again the third day that you may have salvation. And if you choose to reject it, God will have you pay for your own sins in eternal hell. Which you don't have to because Christ has already made the payment. You cannot pay for your sins by being good. There's none good. No, not one. For all have sinned. All have sinned. Come to show the glory of God. You cannot pay for your sins by religion. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Come on, sir. I got the Bible right here. I'll sit down with you. I will show you the Bible. And yet you drive off a hypocrite asking questions where I have the word to show you. A mocker, as the Bible speaks of. A fool, as the Bible speaks of. Don't be a fool. Don't be a mocker. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And be saved today, because you don't know if you've got tomorrow. Come on, people, there's a name in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a salvation, the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't hear these people that are speaking up for these politicians. I don't hear them raising up their voice. But I raise up the name of Jesus 
kind of nobody's just like you in Daytona Beach. And in Florida, in America, in the world, there's plenty of people like you who are nobodies because we're all sinners. We all need to be saved. We all need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. I took my step on, on April 
relying on you. God ain't relying on me because I'm a sinner. I'm a saved Christian. I, I, I fail God all the time. But Jesus Christ never fails. Jesus Christ is always faithful because He's sinless. Sinless perfection is the Son of God. Sinless perfection of righteousness is what can save you. And that's the only thing that can save you. Religion. The Yellow Pages is filled with churches. Which one? Which page in the yellow pages of a church can save you? None. Jesus Christ only saves. It's not Baptist. It's not Catholic. It's not Muslim. It's Jesus Christ that saves. Here we go. I just had to go the wrong way. Acts 4.12 With the wind Neither salvation in any other For there is none other name under heaven given among men Whereby we must be saved Look at the names They can't save you they need to be saved. How are you going to trust somebody that needs to be saved by God if they can't save themselves? You're going to put your trust in another sinner. Good luck. But how about the faithful one? How about the righteous one? How about the one that's God, that His name is above all names, whereby you must be saved? Oh yeah, there are Jesus is all over the place. We're going to try to stop Jesus from coming into this country. But Paul said that there are another Jesuses out there. But there's one Jesus. There's one name that God says, you're going to enter my presence, you better come in that name. That name is the Son of God, Jesus Christ, the sinless perfection, the righteousness of God, who is God, who the blood of God, Acts 20:28. 20, you're only going to come to God's presence by that name. Mary can't do it. Allah can't do it. Any of these names can't do it. My name. Don't you dare go to God and say that loud mouth preacher. I'll laugh with you. Because there's nothing I can do for you. But preach the word. I can't save you. I can't save myself. I stand here with the Bible, with the word that one that can save you, Jesus Christ. government doesn't want Jesus. If I start the freedom trail marching down the street for the freedom of Jesus, I'll get halfway to the library and they will turn Jesus away and say he's not allowed here. Too many do not want Jesus. Too many do not want to have anything to do with Jesus. Don't join that crowd. A Christian is one that has put his faith and trust in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. I don't mean orally. I mean by faith. Nowhere does the Bible say you are to eat and drink Jesus. The Bible says believe on the Lord Jesus Christ by faith, with the heart. And then open up your big mouth on confession. The Bible proclaims that believing is by hearing the word and receiving the word with the ears. Hey, Mr. Bongo Man, you're a little late today. Just in time to hear a little bit about Jesus.
For Jesus saves and Jesus alone saves. It's a message that's so important. I only hear one person on the street screaming a name. No other name. This wind may blow down all these names. I wish it would. But still a name that comes out of a windpipe is a name that saves. Jesus saves. A name of the gospel. That Christ died for your sins. According to the scripture. And was buried. And arose again according to the scriptures. And that's victory. That's victory over death. That's victory over hell. The name of Jesus Christ. There's no other. There's something else you need to know about God and Jesus Christ. In 45 minutes, he'll go away, he'll shut up, he'll go back to business. It's not how it works. You won't just put God off. You put God off and God will put you off. Into a devil's hell. You deny God and He'll go away. He'll get away from you. He'll be okay in a couple of minutes. He's, he's about to leave. I hate to have God tell me that when my last time on, uh, on, before Him would be. That judgment's almost over. I'm just about to throw him the lake of fire. Yeah, just a couple more minutes. Get back to business. Judging others. Cast them off in the lake of fire for not, be not believing. I'll tell you another thing. You will be without excuse before God. I know you can hear my voice. I'm reminded at least every other week that people can hear my voice. And I preach nothing but the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have preached nothing about that word sinners. We are in the hands of an angry God against sin. We are in the hands of a holy God that said, Be holy, for I am holy. You are without excuse when you hear the gospel. When you hear that Christ died for your sins according to the scripture, was buried, arose again according to the scripture, that you may be saved, you will stand before God and say, Oh man, he was right. You can't tell God I never knew. You can't tell God I had no idea. Because God will say that loud mouth preacher preached to you every week. Would you like me to call him back up and give you another 45 minute message? When you hear the salvation brought by God through Jesus Christ, you can never tell God I never knew. You can never go back to Mary. You can never go back to your church. You can never go back to be a good person when you've heard the gospel of Jesus Christ because you have heard that none of that stuff will save you. You'll sit under that preacher that's boring. You'll sit under that church. You'll sit under that religion without hope, without God, without mercy. And you'll be without excuse. Coming to get your fruits and vegetables, you have heard the word of God. And this is a great illustration because our sins began with fruits. Adam and Eve. You know the story? She took the fruit that God said, don't eat, and she ate it. Oh, well, here we are, right back with the fruits, and I'm telling you, God has told you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Are you going to be an Eve and disobey what God says? You see, Eve did exactly what God told her not to do. She ate. Now we're telling you what God's telling you what you need to do, and you're doing exactly what Eve is doing. You're not listening to God. Eve took. We're offering you to Jesus Christ, and you're rejecting. You're not taking. And Jesus 
Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Jesus said, I'm the water of life. I am the bread of life. Nourishment in life is through Jesus Christ. And as you hear these words, as you go about, oh, 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 I don't want to listen, blah, 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 you're hearing and you're without excuse. You may not want to hear, but the words are getting you out. The words are getting out to your ears and into your heart to hear that Jesus saves. Despite whatever you want to believe, Jesus saves. That is going into your ears and into your heart, and you are without excuse if God catches you off into hell for all eternity. When the preacher said, Jesus saves, and Jesus alone saves. You take that belly flop in the lake of fire in your own concord. Because you will not believe on Jesus Christ as your Savior. When you've heard, He saves. Isaiah 1.18, God again has invited you to come now. Let us reason together. Come on out. You want to know what God respects from you? I will turn off the microphone. I will sit down with you. I will open a Bible with you with words of encouragement and words of God to show you what you need to do to be saved and have your name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. I do have a soft tone. Many of you do not believe it. But I do have a soft tone. But God has given me a loud voice to proclaim that Jesus saves for your ears to hear all around. Unless, unless you are deaf at the farmer's market, Daytona Beach, you're without excuse. The gospel has been preached week after week after week after week. Lord willing. Even driving by, you hear that Jesus saves. That is enough that God expects you to say, what am I supposed to do now? I can only do so much with passing traffic and passing you, walking back and forth. I can only as far as get the gospel out for you. When you hear, you're supposed to come. You're supposed to reach out. You're supposed to say, hey, preacher, what do I do? You know, one day... There were three men on a cross one afternoon. One was the Son of God. One was Jesus hanging there and dying because you are a sinner and I am a sinner. We made Jesus die on that cross. And there were two other men, one on the right and one on the left. Had the one that not repented, never said nothing, he would have died and gone to hell just like the other one. But he had to say, Jesus! Jesus didn't say anything to him. You have to say, Jesus! I don't know what to do. Jesus, I'm a sinner. When you read the Gospels, and when you see that Jesus did not walk up to the blind, He did not walk up to the lame, they had to say, Jesus, you've got to reach out to Jesus. He ain't coming to you. He's walking on the road with two of His disciples. And the Bible says He was going to keep on walking. And they said, Jesus, come with us and buy with us. Then He came. We all know about Jesus walking on the water. He was going to walk by that boat of the disciples say, until they reached out, until they said, Jesus, see, I'm the mouth, I'm the voice of God, through the Word of God to tell you that Jesus said, you've got to come to respond. You know, unless you pick up that phone and you hit the green button and you say, hello, there's going to be no response. 
Jesus, you've got to come out to God. With the farmer's market in Daytona Beach, I can't come to you because they don't want Jesus there. They have forbidden Jesus to come amongst their fruits and vegetables that God has given them for a bounty. Now we're going to thank God in a couple of weeks for the pig scam and overblowing our budgets on Black Friday. Here at the farmer's market, Daytona Beach, they made you have to come to me. I can't come to you. You can't say, hey, preacher, come over here for me. I don't want, no, you've got to come out. And God wants you to step out. Isaiah 1.18, come now, let us. The invitation's always set for you to come out and believe on Jesus Christ. Do you think God's going to tell you no? Well, that's not the answer to get you into heaven. It's got to be by the blood, righteousness, and sinless perfection of Jesus Christ. You know, you're calling Jesus a liar when He said you can do it. When He says, I'm the way, the truth. Imagine Jesus saying, I'm the way and the truth, and then you make Him a liar. Oh, I don't want to be in your shoes. You won't be in shoes. In Acts 4.12, the Bible says, There is none other name but Jesus Christ that saves. None other. It's coming to Him as who you are and what you are, a sinner. That's so hard to profess. That I'm not right with you, God. I can never be right with you, God, unless you're son. Is that really so hard? Well, let me take a safe number. 95% of the world's population says, No. I don't want Jesus. It's too hard to say, God, I can't do it. For broad is the way that leads into destruction. Those are the people who say, God, I don't need you. God, I don't want your son. God, I can do it myself. God, just get away. God, I just said blah, blah, blah. And that broad way leads into, into destruction, leads into the lake of fire, which burns forever. But the straight gate to say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I don't know what to do. Jesus, I want to get to the Father. I want to go to heaven. I'll do whatever God tells me to do. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. You need the Word, and the Word's being preached. For you that continue to, to just reject God, I can say, just enjoy your fruits and vegetables. You won't find them in an hell. You won't find alcohol because alcohol evaporates with flame. You won't find your friends because it's utter darkness and gnashing of teeth. You won't find that music. There's no outlets in hell. There's no batteries in hell. Hear the music. You know who the first worship leader was? You know who played the first music for God? Satan himself. There he is, playing his music. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. Not partial, but all. Well, you got to come to Him. you got to reach out to Him. you got to come as a sinner. you got to come to Jesus and say, You know, Jesus, I've got a cancer. I've got a disease called sin, and I don't know what to do with it. And if you put your faith and trust in Him, He will take care of that sin. He will put it under the blood of Jesus Christ in Himself. And when your sins are under the blood of Jesus Christ, He can bring you into the Father. And when your sins are under the 
the blood of Jesus Christ, not only can you come to the Father, but you become a child of God. I'm a son of God by Jesus Christ. Believe me, it's not anything I've done. It's not anything I can do. It's not what I am. I'm a wicked sinner. Thank God most of those sins are under the blood of Jesus Christ. But I still have thoughts and imaginations and dreams. I'm still in His flesh. But I'm saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. In Acts 4.12, there is no other name. And I'm sorry for some of you, you're going to believe that some of these names here after election time, you think they're going to save you and you're fooled. They can't. They can't even save themselves. You think a person who can't find her emails is going to be able to find you? You think a man who can't stay married is going to be able to help you? Come on! How about somebody who walked 33 and a half years on this planet completely, absolutely sinless righteousness forever fulfilling the will of his Father? And knowing that went to that cross because I'm a sinner and died for my sins, knowing that I would reject him, knowing that I'd be against him, knowing I'd still be a sinner and I am, and still died for my sins. That's all according to the scriptures. And we're not done because they buried him and it rejoiced. And that's not the end of it. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's what Christ has done for us. He has finished and fulfilled what you cannot. He has done what God expected you can't do. Because if we can save ourselves, Jesus Christ would never came. He would have sat in heaven and said, go ahead, do it. What is it? Just do it. But we can't. We can't do nothing for our soul. But Christ told the Father, I'll go do it for him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I hope and pray that you'll come to Christ as your Savior, but rest assured that death is coming for you. And if you were to die, the gospel in your life ain't done. These words are not completed yet. Because you'll hear these words for joy if you do believe on Jesus Christ as your Savior. Or you'll hear these words in damnation if you continue to reject God's offering. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. These words are our hope, or they could be to your damnation. But you're without excuse.